everybody, Chef Britt here with ATBBQ.com and today we're making Swedish meatballs. So we're getting close to Christmas and this is a dish that was often served, actually not often, every single time was served uh, for Christmas Eve dinner, I should say. And it's basically uh, just a really traditional, very mildly spiced meatball with a brown gravy. Um, and a lot of love goes into this whole process. Um, and it just reminds me of the big smorgasbord that my grandma would put together every Christmas Eve. So these Swedish meatballs would show up at every Christmas Eve dinner that my grandma would put together. A big smorgasbord of everything in the Swedish fair, including lefse, the lutefisk, the, uh, all the breads and sweets. Um, but the Swedish meatballs were just the highlight of the dinners. So a lot of love goes into this dish. Um, shout out to Peaches, a family friend who gave us this recipe. And uh, so let's just get started right on with the meat. Okay, so this recipe is um, gonna be a mixture of both lean ground beef and lean ground pork. And I'm actually gonna grind the pork today. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because a lot of the ground pork that I was finding uh, at the market was a little too fatty. So I'm going to go ahead and grind a, a pork loin here um, because it's a leaner cut um, as opposed to, let's say, a Boston butt or pork shoulder. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and use the anchor shroom today with this grinder attachment. That's nice and flush, and all of these pieces are pretty cold. So I had these pieces chilling in the uh, freezer just to keep the meat cold and get a really nice clean cut. I'm not really worried about the fat melting out since this is a leaner cut of meat. All right, and I'm going to cut these into some manageable pieces so I can run them through this grinder. Okay, so we're just gonna run this on low speed. And we're just grinding this on a medium die. And I've got about three quarters of a pound of meat. Um, although the recipe calls for only a half pound. And there's inevitably a little bit of loss um, that just gets caught in the uh, grinder. But my trick for that is just to pass a little bit of this already ground meat through just to give that last little push. All right, slow down, so we're done, easy enough. All right, so I'm gonna get this mixer cleaned up and I'm gonna get it set up for the next step. So I've got the um, blender attachment here on our anchor shroom. So I'm just gonna rip up some pieces of baguette to get soft breadcrumbs. Um, we're gonna pulse this a few times and then blend it up so we can have some soft breadcrumbs. And we need about maybe just a, a cup and a half's worth of uh, breadcrumbs. So I'd say about a quarter to a half of a baguette is more than enough. And we'll just do a couple of little blitzes here to get it started. So we don't have to break them down much further than this. Um, we're just going to add this as a binder to our meatball. So um, before we move on to the next step, let's add it to our mixing bowl with some half and half to let it soak. Okay, so I'm just going to measure out about a cup and a half here. Sweet. All right, and then I'm going to add about one cup of half and half, and we're just going to let all these breadcrumbs soak up that moisture. This needs to sit for about 10 minutes before we add anything else to our mix. All right, now I'm just gonna go ahead and cut up about half of an onion to throw into this blender. OK, 
Okay, and this onion is actually so huge that I think I really only need about half of a half here because I just need about a half of a cup of chopped onion in the ends. We're just gonna blitz this. Okay. We just wanna get a pretty fine mince on this because we're gonna mix it into our meatball. Also insert tears. So I'm just going to measure out about a half cup here. Try not to cry while I do it. It's pretty wet, so the next step here is just to saute this down and get some of the mo uh, extra moisture out. So I'm just going to get my skillet going here. And I'm going to throw about a tablespoon of butter down. Okay, now we're going to add our onion. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lower down the heat. I'm not really looking to brown this as much as I'm looking to just cook that extra moisture out. Well, I accidentally got just a little bit of color on there, but it's really not going to affect the uh, end flavor too much. Uh, what I really want to do is just soften them up and then get some of that extra moisture out, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, so now I'm going to just add it on in here, and then we'll start uh, putting the rest of our ingredients in with this meatball mix. Okay, so I'm going to scale out just about a half pound of ground pork here. There we go. And we'll just put it in with our bowl here. There we go. All right, then we're adding a pound of our lean ground beef. Okay, so we're also going to add a quarter cup of minced parsley, one egg, a teaspoon of ginger, a teaspoon of nutmeg, and a teaspoon of allspice, and then a one and a half teaspoons of this hickory smoked salt. So I'm going to go ahead and use the uh, single wire beaters here, and we're just going to mix it until it's fluffy. mix it just a little bit more. We're going for really sort of tacky because there's so much moisture in here we need it to tack up a little bit more. Alrighty. Scrape it down, make sure we're getting an even spread. Okay, I think we're ready to scoop. All right, so from here, we're just going to uh, portion out the meatballs and get them ready to brown in a skillet. All right, so I'm just going to use a two tablespoon scoop here just to get the right size. When grandma makes this, she dips two spoons in ice water and then shapes the meatballs that way. But I'm just going to get them portioned out and then we're going to reform them before we hit them in the skillet to brown. And this should make about 40 meatballs total at this size. 
All right, so in the same pan that I sauteed the onions in earlier, I'm gonna add a generous couple tablespoons of butter here, and we'll start browning all of our meatballs. All right, so I'm just gonna try and get them rounded out. They're pretty soft at this point, so if they end up getting just a little funny in shape, that's not really that big of a deal. And we're gonna work in batches here so we don't overcrowd the pan as we brown these. If you overcrowd the pan, put too many in there, um, you'll, you won't be able to get that Maillard reaction that we're looking for. Um, they'll start to steam instead and they'll never, they'll never get that beautiful color. All right, let's start turning them. That's beautiful. We're just gonna roll them around a couple times here. Just to get these to start to set up. There we go. All right, so once we've got all the color on all sides here, we'll just put them off to the side because we're gonna build a brown gravy with all the pan drippings afterwards. All right, so I'm just working on this last batch here. I've had to work pretty delicately this whole time just because of how wet these uh, meatballs are. But I think that's really what the payoff in the end is, is gonna be just how unbelievably tender everything is. So I've just added a little bit of butter here and a couple of tablespoons of flour and we're gonna create this roux. And we're just gonna hydrate all of this. just a little bit of this beef stock just to get the flour really cooking to start off and then we'll add more and build our gravy. So I've just been stirring and stirring and stirring as this comes together. Um, and it's just gonna thicken up slightly. We don't add a lot of flour and we're not looking for that really thick gravy consistency. We're looking for a thinner one. Um, but now this is where I'm going to depart from grandma's recipe and add a little spice. So if you wanna go traditional, I would just stay right here um, before we move on to the next step. But because I want to just spice it up a little bit. I'm gonna add a little bit of this Oak Ridge Jaw Love Jamaican Jerk Seasoning. And I know it's not Swedish, but it has a lot of the same ginger, all spice notes in there. But it's also got Scotch bonnets in there. So pretty spicy pepper. I'm gonna be um, delicate because I don't have much of a spice tolerance, but you could ramp it up however much you want. Just make sure to taste it before you uh, move on to the next step where we go out to the smoker. And then I'm also gonna add just did a little bit of sour cream, just to give a little more body to this gravy. And we'll just melt it through over a little simmer. And this will tame some of that heat as well. So that's that, we're gonna go ahead and just put the meatballs back in and we're gonna go out to the smoker. All right, so I've got the YS640S set up at 250 degrees. And we're gonna keep this open and uncovered as we put it on the second shelf here. We're gonna come back every 15, 20 minutes and give this a nice little stir and make sure that that smoke is really adhering to the sauce and the meatballs. 
So it's been about 15 minutes. We're just gonna give it a little turn here. All right, so not much has happened. All we're really doing is just trying to get the smoke to adhere to the meatballs and the sauce. And having it open like this is gonna help the sauce uh, tack up a little bit too. Just kind of releasing them. And then I'm just gonna roll them around a little bit here. But again, they're still pretty soft, so you gotta be delicate. All right, I'm also gonna tempt them just to see where we're at. About 120. So I'm gonna give it just another 15, 20 minutes and we'll check on it then. All right, so we've checked it a couple times along the way, but it's been about an hour, so let's give it a final look here. Okay, so it's, uh, it's darkened up a little bit in color here, and that smoke is starting to really just tack up on, on top of the uh, gravy as well as the meatballs. And giving it this turn is really just keeping everything uh, even. Okay, now I'm gonna temp it here. We're gonna see. We're right in that range that we want to be. Um, a food safe temperature would be 145, um, and you can go as high as 185 in here, but these are perfect for serving right now. All right, so when my grandma would serve these, she'd just do it right out of a crock pot. Um, but if you wanted to make this a full meal, I would serve it with either some mashed potatoes or some buttered noodles if you wanted to be authentic. I'm gonna get a little bit extra gravy here and just a little bit of parsley for some color and some freshness. Okay, I'm just gonna dig in here. Oh yeah, nice and soft and tender. It smells so much like my grandma's house at Christmas time. It's so tender, it makes me feel like Christmas. I'm ready to open up some presents, but there's just a little bit of that new kick of spice and that light twinge of smoke. It really just makes the dish just kind of go to that next level. And, uh, you know, I'm really happy that this recipe has been passed down to me, but I'm also happy that I kind of tweaked it a little bit. All for the better. Well, thank you for joining me today. Um, feel free to head on over to atbbq.com slash the sauce to see more recipes um, and to head on over to atbbq.com to check out all of the products that we use today. Um, and happy holidays. For more recipes, head on over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. And we'll see you soon.